part two of the Bateson trailer repair. So the first job is to remove the mud guards. So we pop on our anti-vibration gloves. So hopefully I don't feel all the vibration. And we cut these two nuts off. So I'll just cut through that with the angle grinder just to weaken it enough. So I can then use a cold chisel and then smack those heads off. And then we do the same again on the other side. And back to the old cold chisel. Watch your fingers. So that's that off now. That's going to make access a lot easier. And since I'm going to have my work pretty much cut out on these disastrous hubs, I need as much access as possible. Because we're going to have to try and re-thread that stub axle somehow. Challenge time. So let's try and cut an M18 thread on the old stub axle. So I'm going to tackle this groove that's on the axle first. So I'm going to clean this all up before I hit it with the welder. So we'll try and weld that now. I think in an ideal world I would have replaced the whole axle. Um, but at £400 that's not really a viable option. And this should work. I've set the, the welder to a few seconds on the timer. And so if I just zap around... Um, just to fill that groove and if, as long as I can file that all back down without cutting into the actual stub axle it might all work out in the end fingers crossed it's certainly going to be a challenge but then life is a challenge I guess so I'm going to use a thin cutting disc to try and basically cut that weld now flat with the stub axle normally you'd use a grinding disc which is a bit safer. So the challenge here is to use a fine sanding flat wheel on a die grinder just to remove the excess weld, bring that down to what the axle was originally and then to take the thread which was roughly an M19 thread, I think it was Imperial, bring that thread down to a diameter of 18 millimeters so that I can then cut a new M18 thread so that at least I can get the wheel sort of held on tight as opposed to it being loose so obviously I'm not sanding where the bearing actually sits because that will give us a completely loose wheel it's only the thread the die holder and dies arrive so I've gone very cheap and budget on these because proper taps and dies are extortionately expensive. So the die holder was only £14.83 and I've bought a couple of these M18 by 1.5 dies for £12.80. My thinking is as long as each die does one axle then job's done. And I've also bought a couple of um, M18 castle nuts with washers and split pins and they were 9 95 for the pair. So I only need to cut the thread up to where the bearing is. I don't want to go past that point because that's where the bearing actually sits. So I'm going to put plenty of cutting fluid on here and then it's the point of no return. Because obviously if I mess this up it's going to be a new hub with new axle. So I think the idea is you gradually feed the die on and keep turning back so it's sort of like a forward movement then back again and keep applying plenty of lubricant or cutting fluid. So so far everything seems to be going quite well. I'm actually quite pleased with the progress of this. So I keep doing this for quite a while. So I've speeded this all up. So back and forward, back and forward. Checking the nut now spins on, which it does. It's still not quite on far enough. So I've got to cut the thread down, uh, the old thread down a little bit more. 
So I'm going to use a Dremel for that. And I've put some tape on just to make sure I don't go over the thread that I've already cut. So then take the tape back off and carry on again. So now the thread's actually all cut. It's all looking good. So I can put the hub on with the bearing, tighten it up and see if the wobble has gone. But at least I've actually got some thread there now. The split pin will still hold the wheel on anyway. Um, so this is more to make sure that the wheel doesn't wobble. And it looks good. Quite pleased with that. Just the other side. And on to the other side. So I wonder what this side will have in store for me. So it's the same procedure as on the other side. We we'll get rid of this mud guard so that we've got proper access and lighting so that we can see what we're doing. So at least this axle doesn't actually need welding. But saying that, it almost looks like perhaps it has been welded before because there's definitely some marks on there. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to put some tape there where the bearing is so I know not to go that far and... In theory, I've just got to take this thread area down to 18 millimetres in diameter. So I'm going to go for the Dremel on this one. Because I think this might be a bit more efficient and accurate if I just keep whirling around with that. So what are we down to there? 18.46. So we're nearly there to get that down to 18 millimeters so now that we're nearly at the 18 millimeters i'll go back onto the die grinder with the drum flap sander just to smooth all that off now and then we should better cut our new thread on that like the other side so apply some road cold cutting fluid there and fingers crossed this one goes to plan as well. So I'll speed up because it does get a bit monotonous. So ready for high speed and go. Even high speed looks quite slow actually. I thought I'd leave this part in actually so you could see the whole process um, so now we've got the thread so we've got a nice M18 thread there I'm just going to check it with the bearing probably needs to go on a little bit more than that so that we can snug it up a bit more so I'll spin this back on at least that looked faster Okay, so we've done a little bit of extra thread there. Another couple of revolutions. So, a bit more roll coal. So the thread's up to the bearing now. Check the nut. And all good to go. Now to remove the braking pull rod. I've jacked the trailer quite high at this point so we can get camera access. So in this photo we can see the parts of the underneath of the trailer so we can see the square axle tube, the braking pull rod, the braking balance bar and the brake cables themselves. So what we will do is spray a little bit of penetrating oil on here and leave that to soak. And on closer inspection there's no way that nut's going to come off. So I think we'll have to work this from the other end. Note the little cone washer there though, that sits on the balance bar. So working at the other end now, we can use a pair of mould grips on that uh, M8 bulk thread. And then using a 13mm spanner, undo the lock nut there. That will re release the coupling. And then we just take that other nut off 
like so, and then we can take the rods and push it back the other way. So this is a much easier way of doing this. And then we can just thread the rod backwards. And that's about 174 centimetres long, that threaded rod. Normally they come in one metre lengths. Now to remove the not detachable brake cables. So before heating this up, I'm just going to pop a heat sink on there because I don't want to melt the inside of the cable. And then I'll use my Rothenberger map gas and just heat that nut up and hopefully that might just help it come undone. So I've sprayed a little bit of plus gas on there now. So using the mold grips and a 13 mil, I'm just going to hopefully wiggle this back and forth bit by bit and try and get some movement. I don't really want to have to buy a new cable. I think the cable is about £25 each. So I would like to pursue this um, and remove it all intact so that I can try and reuse it. So now we've got it basically off. So I can use a socket now. So I'm going to use a 6mm spanner just on the back there and now a 13mm socket on just a T-bar and I should be able to get this nut off now. So we speed this part up as usual and that's come off okay. A little bit of perseverance but you get there in the gotcha. end. We just pop that nut back on there for safekeeping and now we need to look at this other nut. So this nut is called the cable abutment nut and in this instance it's 19 millimeters. Again this was quite tricky to undo, a lot of backward and forward movements and plenty of plus gas on there. Couldn't really put a blowtorch on that because we would be melting the plastic off the cable. So that's one of the cables done. So we can now just withdraw that and that one is for the opposite wheel. Well, that's for the left wheel that one. So we give the other side a good splash with some plus gas and hopefully this one will come off. And a good huff there. So I'll speed this up and as you can see I just keep wiggling backwards and forwards and gradually easing the nut forward and then eventually it comes off. If you, if you don't wiggle it backwards and forwards any of the debris will start binding in the thread and then you risk damaging the thread. So that's all off. It doesn't look great but hopefully I can re-oil this cable and it will be okay. Removing the remains of what was some brake shoes. So looking at the main parts of the hub, we can see we have two brake shoes. One is a standard one held in with a retaining spring and the other one is a special reversing shoe assembly. At the top we have the shoe adjusting bolt with its wedges to preset the distance of the brake shoes from the drum. We have a couple of yellow springs there and then we have the main brake cable expander assembly at the bottom. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take out this retaining spring which you just push down, unclip at the back and withdraw that. So that standard shoe is now quite loose. It's held on with a couple of springs. So I'm going to use a 17mm spanner now to release the tension on the wedges that are pushing the shoes apart. And isn't it worrying when you turn a bolt and you can hear bits of metal falling on the floor? That tells you something's not quite right. I think this one needs a new backing disc. So these should be a bit easier to get out now because some of the tension's gone on the springs. And these springs are very strong. These springs are probably the only thing that hasn't actually rusted on this hub. So we've just got the top spring holding it on now. And we should be able to just fold that in 
and take the shoes away, like so. So the reversing shoe assembly is on the right and the standard one is on the left. And then we've just got this brake lever at the bottom which activates the brakes and that will just need to be unhooked. So this part just unhooks. So this is the expander part, so that just unhooks and comes off. And then we've got like a hook on here, which is also hooked onto the cable. So we've just got to turn that at an angle, and then that should pop off like so. So we should be able to nearly withdraw the cable now from the rear. Now I'm just noticing there, that looks like that's already been welded. So whether this has had a new back plate in the past, or a whole new assembly, I don't know. And back to the brake cables. And there's one of these on the other side. And it hurts. So anyway, so back to spraying some plus gas into where the uh, there's like a shroud on the brake cable that goes over like a cable bracket. So we're going to use a, a bit of a punch here and a small hammer just to work this back off. It is aluminium, so you've got to be a bit careful. There we go. So that's the cable now out, and it's come out with the cable bracket, and that's half of the whole bracket. So that comes off like so. That piece is in position, stays there. So if I put this cable into the bench vise, I can then use the pressure of the vise to hold that properly, as opposed to mould grips, which can slip. So again, it's just move it backwards and forwards to try and loosen that nut. Give it some heat, and that should just loosen things up. Bit of expansion there. It's starting to move now. So if we just clean the thread, like so, get some of the debris out of the thread, because that will bind as we undo it. A little bit of penetrating fluid. And then that should come off quite nicely. So hopefully that cable's been saved. And then just take that plate off. Right, so I'll now lubricate this cable. So I'm just going to fill this little cup here with plenty of 3-in-1. That's quite a light machine oil. And then I'm going to work this backwards and forwards and try and get some of the oil to actually enter the sleeve where the cable is. I'll then leave that, top it up with some oil and then leave it to drip all the way through. So using a 17mm spanner I'm just going to remove this bolt and this is what pulls the wedge in and this wedge then pushes against the two side wedges which push the shoes out as like a pre-adjustment. So that's the bolt and there's a wedge each side so if I pull the wedge out like so and then there's another one on the other side there's a wedge in the middle of this which, which we can't see at the moment. So the two wedges sit either side of that bolt and they pull a wedge towards them and then that forces the shoes out as like a pre-setting point just to keep the shoes just off the inside of the drum. So taking a quick look at the backing plate here, as you can see it's in a very poor state and ideally this would be replaced. Now to the Sealy SA661 air needle scaler. So I'm going to try and clean this back plate up as much as I can just to see how bad the rust is. So what I'm using here is the Sealy SA661, which is an air needle scaler. They are about £130, but it will get all the loose rust off. And if you persevered, it would get you all back to a nice clean surface ready for repainting. So it's a little bit better than what it was. Now back onto the left hub. So we're now onto the left hub once again. This time we're going to remove the brake shoes as we did for the other side. So here's the wedge being removed. And this is a slightly different back plate on this one. 
and you can actually see the wedge protruding. So I thought I'll film this so you can actually see this wedge that comes out. And there it is. And that pushes against the other two wedges on either side. So we're just going to remove the shoes from this one now. Now note that the auto reverse brake shoe is on the left and you can see there's a spring there and like a lever. And the auto reverse shoe works by allowing that shoe to, to ride up on the spring and slip, thereby allowing the trailer to go backwards. So we've just got to unhook the brake cable now from the mechanism. Use a pair of long nose pliers for that. And then we should better just unclip that little hook there that's actually on the end of the cable. It's like a, a cable nipple in there. So we've just got to pull that at an angle. And that should then come free. And then we've just got to remove the cable. So I'm just going to use the Sealy Scaler again on this. So I'm making sure I've got my face mask on, ear protectors, and I'm going to use anti-vibration gloves to try and minimise that vibration because this tool really can vibrate your hands and it's not nice. So as you just saw there, one of the wedges fell out with the vibration. So this backing plate doesn't look too bad. It's obviously different to the other side. So whether this is a better quality one or something, I don't know. But anyway, we've got most of the rust off now. So onwards and upwards. Will a metal bracket hurt your head? And will a hammer hurt your thumb? Let's find out. So this was my mistake, putting the wedge back in when I was about to use a hammer on it. Because that was going to fall in front of my face and make me jump. We tend to laugh at health and safety, but saying that, had I worn a helmet and some leather gloves, I could have saved myself a bit of pain. I think I'd rather have not had the pain. So looking at this cable, we've obviously got the outer braid is rusted and has swollen, which is probably pinching the in a cable which is not good I don't think this cables gonna move much no it's certainly not gonna move by hand so it's gonna take a bit of work to get this going again it's probably only gonna be a temporary cable it might need replacing let's hit it with a hammer see if I can hurt myself a bit more so I'll try putting it in a vise and see if I can just pull the cable does at least move it's extremely stiff that's definitely not going to operate under normal conditions so let's try and put a bit of three and one down there and see if we can pull it back again so at least we have got some movement now that wasn't too difficult and pull it again so I think if I just fill the cap with three and one and leave that overnight. Hopefully the oil will come out the end and all will be okay. And a quick look at the back plate before I fit the new shoes. Thank you for watching and please see part three coming soon. And if you could like and subscribe to help my channel, that would be really appreciated.